Next section, metal fasteners. Nails, the metal fasteners commonly used by carpenters, are available in a wide range of types and sizes. Basic kinds are illustrated in the diagram, and they range in size basically from four inches long, that's called a 20 penny, and then they go all the way down to only one inch long, and that's called a two penny. Um, the common nails is, has a heavy cross section and is designed for rough framing. The thinner box nail is used for toe nailing and frame construction and light work. The casing nail is the same weight as nails used in finished carpentry work to attach doors and windows casings and other wood trim. Finishing nails and brads are quite similar and have the thinnest cross section and the smallest head. Uh, what we're using in the scale model house project are brad nails. Um, the nail size unit is called a penny and is abbreviated with the lowercase letter d. It indicates the length of the nail. A 2d or two penny nail is one inch long. A 6d or six penny nail is two inches long. This measurement applies to common box casing and finished nails. Brad's and small box nails are specified by their actual length and gauge number. So we're using um, 18 gauge brad nails and then they have different lengths of course so some of the lengths are um, we're using uh, th 5 eighths and we're using inch long and those are able to hold our scale model house together quite well. Nails for power nailing are shown, um, are a little different. They are specialized and designed with a special purpose. Annual or spiral threads will greatly increase holding power. Some nails have a special coat, coating, such as zinc, cement, or resin. Coatings or threadings increases nail holding, nail holding power. Nails are made from such material as iron, steel, copper, bronze, aluminum, and stainless steel. Wood screws have greater holding power than nails and are often used for interior construction and cabinet work. Their size is determined by the length and diameter. Screws are classified according to the shape of the head, surface finish, and material from which they are made. Wood screws are available in various lengths and widths and diameters. Most wood screws today are made of mild steel with zinc, a zinc chromate finish. They are labeled as F.H, which stands for flathead. Nickel and chromium plated screws, also screws made of brass, are available for special work. Wood screws are usually priced and sold by the box. Um, they could also be sold by the pound, and usually the boxes give you a pound rating. Um, they did mention brass nails. Uh, brass is very expensive, so that would have to be a very, um, that would be like a fine woodworking or finished carpentry process that would require brass nails. Additional useful fasteners include lag screws, hanger bolts, carriage bolts, corrugated fasteners, and metal splines. Specialized metal fasteners are described in other sections of the book. Adhesives. Adhesives that carpenters use may be classified as glues and mastics. Research and development have, have created many new products in this area. Some are highly specialized, being designed for a specific material or application. Brief descriptions of several or commonly used glues fo uh, follows. Before I get into this, each glue has a certain rating and the rating and material applications are listed on the bottle itself in the direction section. There will also be a temperature range in which you can use the glue. Uh, surface preparation uh, information and so make sure that you choose a glue that's appropriate for your process or your project. Choosing an inappropriate glue will give you less than desirable results. Uh, for instance, uh, we use on the toolbox Tight Bond 3, which is an exterior waterproof, water resistant glue. 
Type Bond 3 is meant for exterior use, and since the toolboxes will be going outside or may get damp, you wouldn't want the glue just to come apart uh, and your toolbox fall apart just because it got uh, placed in some wet grass. Next, polyvinyl resin emulsion glue, generally called polyvinyl or white glue, is excellent for interior construction. It comes in ready-to-use plastic squeeze bottles and is easily applied. This glue sets up rapidly, does not stain the wood or dull tools, and holds wood parts securely. Polyvinyl glue hardens when its moisture is removed through absorption by the wood or through evaporation. It is not waterproof and therefore not appropriate. Four, assemblies that will be subject to a high humidity or moisture. The vinyl acetate material used in the glue are thermoplastic. Under heat, they will soften. Thermo re refers to the process of applying heat. They should not be used in constructions where the temperature may rise above 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius. Next type, urea formaldehyde glue, uh, resin glue, usually called urea resin, is available in a dry powder form that contains a hardening agent or catalyst. It is mixed with water to a creamy consistency before use. Urea resin is moisture resistant, dries to a light brown color, and holds wood securely. It hardens through a chemical action when water is added and sets at a room temperature in four to eight hours. The next type, contact cement, is applied to each surface and allowed to dry until the piece of, a piece of paper will not stick to the film. The cemented surfaces are then pressed firmly together and bonding takes place immediately. The pieces must be carefully aligned for the initial contact because they cannot be moved after they touch. Bonding time is not critical and can usually be performed at any time within one hour. Contact cement is made with a neoprene, neoprene rubber base with, and is excellent, an excellent adhesive for applying plastic laminates or joining parts that cannot be clamped together easily. It works well for applying thin veneer strips to plywood edges and can also join combinations of wood, cloth, leather, rubber, and plastic. Contact cement usually contains volatile, flammable solvents. The work area where it is applied must be well ventilated. Uh, what they're saying is that it must have some toxic off-gassing process and that you would not want to be breathing that in a confined space. Casein glue is made from milk curd, hydrated lime, and sodium hydroxide. It is supplied in powder form and is mixed with cold water for use. After mixing it, it should set for about 15 minutes before it is applied. It is classified as a water-resistant glue. Casein glue is used for structural laminating and works well with wood that has high moisture content. It has a good joint filling qualities, therefore it is often used on materials that have not been carefully surfaced. Casein is used for gluing oily wood such as teak, paduk, and lemon wood. Its main disadvantages are that it stains the wood, especially such species as oak, maple, and redwood and has an abrasive effect on tool edges. Um, probably not recommended to use um, a glue that you can't manipulate well. Just my, just my recommendation. Mastics. Mastics are heavy, pasty types of adhesives that have revolutionized the methods used in applications of wall boards, wood paneling, and some types of floors. They vary in their characteristic and application method and are usually designed for specific types of materials. Some are waterproof, others must be used where there is no excessive moisture. One application method consists of placing several globs on the surface of the material and then pressing the unit firmly into place. This causes the mastic to spread over a wider area. Some mastics are spread over the surface 
with a notched trowel, and still others are designed for caulking gun applications. Mastics are usually packaged in metal containers or gun cartridges ready for application. Always follow the directions of the manufacturer. Um, yes, mastics are extremely fast setting adhesives. Usually your work time is less than 15 minutes. Uh, they are built for speed and I would also recommend that you have a well ventilated area. If you're working inside with mastics, um, a fan would be appropriate. If you do not have access to a fan, uh, I recommend that you use a fumigate rate, rated uh, mask with, that has a positive pressure seal. Uh, that uh, mask will keep the fumes from uh, make, making you sick. Let's go over the important terms from Unit 1. Annular rings. Those are the rings um, that are indicate each year of growth of the tree. Uh, cambium, case and glue, composite board, conifers, contact cement, core, cross bands, edge grain, engineered lumber, equilibrium moisture content, exterior plywood, faces, factory and shop lumber, fiber saturation point, flat grained, glue laminated beams, hardboard, heartwood, interior plywood, kiln dried, laminated veneer lumber, lignin, lumber cores, mastics, moisture content, number one common, open grain woods, oriented strand board, parallel laminations, parallel strand lumber, particle board, plain sod, polyvinyl resin emulsion glue, quarter sod, sapwood, selects, span ratings, steel framing members, tension bridging, urea for malgahyde resin glue, veneer cores, wafer board, and xylem. We're going to pick up with chapter two next, and this again is a review of the Modern Carpentry textbook. I hope that you have enjoyed our time together today. Goodbye.